Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to Ali Dawa with the video Ali Dawa debunked Christianity in just one minute. Tough questions about Christianity on the channel towards eternity. As far as I know, Ali Dawa is one of the biggest YouTubers in the Dawa scene nowadays. Up until now, I haven't watched many videos of his. I saw a few scandals, quote unquote, back in the day when I used to follow David Wood. Shame on me. But up until now, we haven't reacted to any of his videos or the channel Towards Eternity. So this is a great opportunity to react to both at the same time. Let's have a look. How would we know that Christianity is wrong? Can you debunk the Trinity in one minute? Are you saying disciples never met Jesus? Please be honest and answer this question. Who dominates Speaker's Corner? They say, who do I pray to? The Father? No, let me pray Jesus today. No, today, Holy Spirit. Who do I pray to? Anything that is in the creation cannot be God because they are dependent. Uh, now Christians have gone to a length where they reject the Bible. They say, we don't need the Bible. And to me, it's like, wow. They made it look like a police investigation, kind of funny. Ali Dawa, you have one minute for each question. You ready? Uh, are you ready? Can you debunk the Trinity in one minute? Well, it's very simple. They believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are all gods, but they are not the same as each other. They're not all gods in that sense. They are three persons of the one same God. But the point here is that if you think about it, they are all dependent on each other, yeah? So if something is dependent on something else, it cannot be a creator. If Jesus walked the earth as a human being, ate, slept, and went to the toilet, we do not believe this is deserving to be a god to be worshipped. You know? The Christian perspective on this would be that they are co-equal. They're not dependent on each other, but rather there is one essence of God and those are just expressions of that one essence. Christians do not claim that only the man, Jesus, is this son, but the son is called the Logos, which is eternal. So it means that this Logos itself, the son, existed before Jesus' incarnation. By the way, I'm not a Trinitarian. I'm simply explaining the Christian position. Oh, so that's the reason why the Holy Spirit, for example, is the same thing. It is in the creation. Anything that is in the creation cannot be God because they are dependent. And anything that's dependent cannot be deserving of worship. They say that Muhammad copied Quran from the Bible, Hasha. What do you say about this? Well, we've got a lot of things to say about that. Not only that, the Christians have a lot to say too. Actually, the Christians talking helps our case because uh, Allah says in the Quran that woe to those who change the scriptures with their own hands and say this is from Allah. This again is a prophecy. If you think about it, Allah saying, the Bible is corrupted. They've changed it. Now, if the Bible was not corrupted, the Quran is wrong. I don't know. I'm not an Islamic scholar, nor am I a Christian scholar, nor am I a historian. I'm simply sharing my own perspective. Reading the Quran, I didn't get the same perception of what Ali Dawa just stated. When I read the Quran, the Quran referred to the Christians as people of the book. And therefore, if we have any questions about the scriptures, we should go to them, which then, of course, would imply that they're not corrupted. Right? If the Quran is saying the Bible is corrupted, it's been changed. If the Bible is not corrupted, that means the Quran is wrong. You have Christians today, Bart Ehrman, well, ex-Christian, Bruce Metzger, and he's an atheist. Any of them, and when you go to the Bible, you have footnotes. These are added in, which shows to us that the scriptures have been changed. It's a prophecy. But coming back to the question that you asked, this was a little bit off a tangent. If that was the case, if the Quran copied from the Bible, why did it not copy the mistakes? For example, we know at the time of Joseph, there was kings. They were not pharaohs. The Bible calls them pharaohs. The Quran calls them kings. Why kings? Allah calls the ruler pharaoh at the time of Moses. But when he talks about the time of Joseph, he says king. Sure. Why king? If it's king, that means that um, the Bible, it could not copy from it. Because if it copied from the Bible, it should call the ruler what? Pharaoh. But he called it king. 
And this is historically correct. Yes, this was a strong argument for me as well. When I heard for the first time a few months ago, I researched it and it is true. The Quran did not copy those mistakes from the Bible. Up until now, I haven't gotten a satisfactory answer from the Christians. So if you have Christian watching this video, please let me know in the comment section what you think about this. Why do we see a correction of those false statements within the Bible in the Quran? They deciphered the Rosetta Stone and they uh, deciphered the hieroglyphics and they found out that at the time of Joseph there was no pharaohs. Right. So the Bible has been copied from someone else. And just because they copy, they shouldn't throw mud at us because we don't copy. How would we know that Christianity is wrong? The Trinity doesn't make sense, logically. So we know, when we look at the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, it doesn't add up. He's God, He's God, He's God, but the God, the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not the Father, but they are all God. Logically, it doesn't make sense. Most Christians leave Christianity because of this. They say, who do I pray to? The Father? No, let me pray to Jesus today. No, today, Holy Spirit. Who do I pray to? That's number one. Number two, the Bible. This is the scripture. So we ask a very simple question. Is the Bible the word of God? Yes. Can the word of God be corrupted? No. I never saw it as the word of God, to be honest. I saw it as something that was inspired by God, after all written down by men, and therefore I could never see it as the word of God. Okay. If that's the case, how do you have this many books added in, yeah? 86, 72, 73, 66. This is books, books, big books thrown out. And what is this, you're playing toys. And then you look at the verses, for example, John 7, 5, 3 to Mike, Mark 11, there's passages. Yeah, absolutely, man. In the end, we have to put our trust in the church fathers that then allegedly have been led by the Holy Spirit and therefore they made the right choice by picking one book over the other. I personally couldn't put my faith into those church fathers because after all, they're not prophets. Taken out. They realize it's not in the original manuscripts, yeah? So how can I trust? I always say this to the Christians. I say to them, if I was to give you a bottle of water or a glass of water, and I put one drop of poison, just one little drop. Would you drink it? No. He says, no. I said, why not? He says, it will harm my body. How are you drinking the Bible when it's destroying your soul? You know it's corrupted. So how are you consuming the Bible for your soul? And you know it's been changed, it's been corrupted. This is not added in here, this is taken out there. We don't know who Mark, Matthew, Luke and John is. Who are these people? They never met Jesus. In Islam, Islam, one, the oneness of God makes sense. Yeah? Sure. The Quran is preserved, hasn't been changed. And not only that, we have chains of transmission. We have books about the Sahaba, who they are, the Prophet ﷺ, how they met him, what they ate. We know everything about them. We don't know nothing about these disciples. We don't know nothing about the Bible. So from the top to the bottom, it's messy. Messy it is, I agree. Never met Jesus? So to be honest, the question that needs to ask here is who are these people? We know nothing about them. Like in Islam, we have chain of transmission, hadith, sanad. We have signs of hadith. We know, mutawatir. We know how many people heard it. They have nothing. So if you read the new Jerome commentary of the Bible, which is the tafsir, uh, like in a nutshell, like telling them who these individuals are, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. John, they're saying, which John are you talking about? Is it John, the son of Zebedee? John, the presbyter? Or John, the apostle? There's three Johns. They're saying, which one is the, the, the one? They don't know. So the thing is here, I'm getting information about the hereafter from people I don't know, from a book, that they, they wrote, inspired by God, that's full of mistakes, and they are telling me about a God concept that has, makes no sense. This is uh, yani, uh, Janaza. Yani, yeah. As far as I know, yeah. you go to Speaker's Corner every Sunday yes. and present these arguments to Christians. Yes. What are their reactions? Changes from Christian to Christian, like Allah says in the Quran, least to sawa. The Christians, the people of the book are not the same. There are good, there are bad. So the thing is, when you talk to them, they don't want to know. All they do is insult, insult, swear, insult. But when you speak to a genuine Christian and you bring these arguments, they of course take you on board and say, okay, you know what? It cannot be from God. Uh, now Christians have gone to a length where they reject the Bible. They say, we don't need the Bible. And to me, it's like, wow. Yeah, and they're literally saying, we got Jesus. But mm -hmm. how do you know about Jesus if there's no Bible? You know, you say no to the Bible, you say no to Jesus because his resurrection, his death, his divinity is in the Bible. So yeah, it depends which branch of Christianity you're talking about. If you look into the Orthodox branch, this is where I come from. It is predominantly about the church and the church life, the so-called holy tradition that is happening within the church, which then has a transformative effect. So the Bible is, of course, part of it, but it's not necessarily about just reading the Bible, but participating within the church. On top of that, there are different books and texts about the 
lives of the saints and whatnot. So in its essence, orthodoxy is about the transformative effect within the individual. This doesn't mean that you do not read the Bible, but the Bible is not all of the religion. Now it's come to a point where they're saying, no problem, Bible is corrupted. Okay, yeah, we accept. We don't need it. We have Jesus. Like, well, what can no. you say to that? <laughs> And the Jesus doesn't match one another, by the way, because I speak to someone, he says, I saw Jesus. I said, what does he look like? He says, oh, white hair, this stuff. I said, okay, one second. I call another guy. I said, you saw Jesus in your dream. He inspired you. What does he look like? Blonde hair. I said, he has white hair, he's blonde hair. It's two different people. How do you know it's not Satan? How do you know? There are so many groups that comes to Speaker's Corner. Yes. Atheists, Muslims, Christians. Yeah. Please be honest and answer this question. Mm. Who dominates speaker's corner well to be honest with the amount of people that come it's muslims like numbers but with logical islam muslims logically like i'm thinking even if there was one muslim he would dominate that intellectually and if there was a hundred christians he will intellectually dominate all of them our questions are complete that's why i want to ask you a question you know, why do you not accept islam after i've answered all of them i mean repeat after me I should. You are muslim, alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm missing. <laughs> All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. I have to say that I got the impression that Ali Dawa doesn't have a deep understanding of Christianity. He certainly has a lot of experience in debating with Christians, and he certainly has a lot of experience in giving Dawa and giving the Islamic perspective. However, I saw plenty of mistakes in his attempt to debunk Christianity. Yet again, I'm not here to defend Christianity. I'm here to learn about Islam. I disagree with plenty of points within Christianity myself. This is why I research Islam in the first place. But nevertheless, we have to be fair and we have to represent both religions equally and truthfully so we truly understand what is going on and which points are debated here. He strawmaned the religion in many ways and debunked then those strawmen. This is not fair and for me it looks like a cheap shot at Christianity to make Christianity look worse and with that make Islam look better. In my opinion, this is not needed. He could truthfully discuss the facts about Christianity and then present Islam. But hey, maybe he simply is ignorant on the topic and truly does not know. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. I double checked yet again. Roughly 72% of my viewers are not subscribed to this channel. What is going on? So do me the favor, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, guys. All right. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box, Patreon, etc. As always, guys, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.